Hello there, my name is Yako and I'm one of the developers here at PostHog. And today I'll be talking through how you can provide analytics for your own clients um, using PostHog. Um, so this isn't something that PostHog was designed to do, um, but it is something that it can do, um, although it does require a little bit of work from your side. Um, so this will be a tutorial primarily aimed at the developers that would implement something like this. Uh, so that's just kind of a heads up. Um, as for a use case, um, so we can think of something like a Shopify, right, where they have multiple stores. People can create stores on their platform, um, and they might want to provide analytics for their own users about how many people have viewed their store or how many people um, out of the, these people that have viewed the store, what percentage of them has bought a product, uh, so showing the conversion rate. So there's a lot of kind of scenarios where you have multiple clients using you, um, so maybe you're a SaaS business, and you want to provide analytics for them. Um, and you maybe don't want to build this in-house. So you can leverage a solution like PostHog, which you may already be using for your own analytics, and then provide analytics for your users that way. So this is what I'm going to be kind of going through today. Um, so let's go through kind of the basics and, you know, how, how could I go about doing this? Um, so the first kind of simplest way um, would be just using shared dashboards. Um, now, these fit a very small and niche kind of use case. Um, but, you know, so what I've just done is I've, I have this dashboard, I've now shared it, um, so this creates a public link um, that I can now share with people outside of PostHog. Now, this is also um, embeddable, so you could put this into an iframe and display it on your website as is. Um, but, you know, so this fits some sort of use cases where you can show some aggregate stats to people um, or something like that. But... Um, what you may also do is let's say you have some sort of enterprise customers or some more advanced uh, customers is you could come into PostHog and, and create some dashboards specifically for them and share those with their team. Um, so this would be kind of a, you know, a tailored service that you could provide. Um, but this isn't very scalable, right? What we're really looking for um, and the gist of this video is how can you dynamically generate views, analytics views for your customers leveraging data that PostHog has and has processed for you. That's kind of really what we're getting at here. Um, so let's let's go through that. So there's a few things that you absolutely need uh, in order to be able to do that. So the first thing that you absolutely need to do in order to provide analytics for your users is you need to set a property on your events um, or potentially on your users, but maybe preferably, preferably on your events. Um, that allows you to identify who that event should count towards. Um, so let's take a look at an event so that we kind of exemplify that. Um, so an event in PostHog, as you may already be familiar with, um, has all kinds of properties. Um, some of these properties are auto-captured by us, um, and some of these properties you pass yourself. Um, so you send these to us. Now, what you really need, if you're looking to provide analytics for your customers about how customers are using their app, um, is you need a way to identify these. Um, so here, for example, I have this organization ID. Now, you probably have some internal way of doing this, uh, some ID, maybe a company name, something that's unique um, to that company or client that you have. Um, this is needed because if you didn't have this, there was no way to, to distinguish exactly what event came from where or these kinds of things. Um, so you, you really need to have this. Just on a quick recap, if you're doing this, for example, on your front end, this is what it might look like. Um, so we have your posthog.capture call. This is the event name. And then we have a properties object um, where we can pass kind of whatever we like. And here I'm passing an organization ID that you would be pulling from somewhere else in your logic. Um, so this is kind of what it might look like. You can also use uh, super properties for this, but you should refer to the, to the posthog docs for that. Um, those would prevent you from needing to have to um, specify this on all of your events um, and rather just tell PostHog to just set this property on all of the events that come from this user. Um, but essentially, this is kind of what you want to, to get to. So let's take a look at how we might leverage this in PostHog. Um, so let's create a graph um, based on that my event. I'm not sure there's particularly great data for this, but there's certainly something here. So let's try hourly. Um, let's do a little refresh here. Okay, so now we're looking at this my event. You know, we're looking at aggregate stats here. Um, and we've seen that at five o'clock, we've had three 
of these on my event. Um, now let's go ahead and add a filter to that. Um, and we can use that organization ID property. Um, and that will give us um, the same chart. Let's go and do it. Uh, let's do a contains here and let's do a refresh. And now we see that we have only two of this my event. Um, and so this is kind of, you know, the way you would go about this in the UI. Um, but essentially, this is the same thing as you want to do programmatically. Um, so we, you could completely build, you know, try to get data from PostHog and parse it yourself. But perhaps the easiest way is to leverage the tools that PostHog has to create these views and then just leverage the data that's already parsed for these views that you can then render on your own website. Um, so in this case, as you can see, um, the URL here has essentially everything that PostHog needs to render this graph. Um, so this is kind of what we need as well. Uh, this is the way we're going to get the data. Um, so let's take a look at how we do that. So I'll open up my network tab. Let me kind of reduce this a little bit. Um, and I'll be looking for API requests. Um, so let's go ahead and refresh this. So this will give us the same graph, um, but let's see the types of API calls that PostHog made. Well, so there's a lot of stuff here, but really what I'm looking for is this here. Um, as you will see, this essentially has all of the same query parameters as we have here on this URL, but with a slight change. Um, instead of just going to slash insights, it's hitting an endpoint slash API slash insights slash trend. So this is really what we want because this isn't giving us HTML or anything like that. This is just giving us the data, which is what we need. Um, so we want to create a view in PostHog, which is you know analogous to what we want to show our clients. That's kind of the easiest way to go about it. Um, PostHog will give us a URL with everything that we need. Um, and then we just need to kind of leverage that in our application or in our logic. Um, so I'll go ahead and copy this URL here um, and I'll just drop it in here. You don't need to worry about this for now. I'll just pop it in right there um, and then I'll come back here for now. So now we've established a few of the things we need. Um, we need an, an endpoint to get our data from um, and we need to make sure that we filter or we add a property to our events um, based on uh, an, a unique identifier for your clients, right? Which is what we have right here. And this is represented in the URL. Um, we'll probably see it somewhere here, right there, um, is, is what we're kind of, where we're doing this filter here. Um, now to use the API, um, we need to authenticate. Um, so authentication in this case is done via personal API keys, which you can find over here in my account. So these are different from project API keys. Project API keys are what you use in the libraries to send events into PostHog. That's a public token. You can share it around it. It doesn't matter. But personal API keys should be handled with care. Um, so these allow you to get data from PostHog as well. Um, so these are kind of pretty powerful and, and you really should handle them appropriately. Um, so I'll go ahead and create one of these. Um, and uh, let me copy this value. I'm also going to dump it here, and then we'll kind of come back to this later. Um, so this is how you authenticate to PostHog. And this key essentially lets you do everything that is being done on the PostHog UI in a programmatic way. So it has a lot of power, really. Um, so, okay, this is kind of the gist and the basics of, of what we need. Um, so let's now kind of create a quick app so that we can do this and, and see what that might look like. So over here, you maybe won't be seeing my face anymore, but at least you'll be seeing the code. Um, we have some very simple code, and, and I'm hiding some things here. But essentially, um, we're doing a request um, to PostHog to grab this data um, that we've just seen on the UI. Um, and we're handling it here. So I've hidden all of this here where it kind of parses the data and puts it in appropriate formats. Um, and then we're rendering this as a chart. Um, so we're using charts.js uh, to do that. Um, just for context, I mean, we can even kind of grab this here um, and take a look at what this data might look like. Um, and this is it, right? Um, so essentially, you want to do this request yourself. And, and this will really depend on the types of charts that you want to render. Um, but you will kind of have to, to parse these however you like. Um, so you need to look at these requests and, and the data that they return and, and how you might handle them in your front end. Um, so let's kind of come back here. Well, so here we're doing a request for this data, we're parsing it, and we're generating a chart from it. Um, now, there's a few important things to notice here. Um, first is we're doing the 
we're doing this request on the front end, which you absolutely should not do. You really should not do. Um, the reason this is being done here is just for demo purposes. But what you really want to do is you want to fetch the data from post hog in your back end, and then you send that data to your front end. Uh, because this personal API key cannot be out there in your front end for people to see. Um, so yeah, you want to leverage this in your back end and then send the data yourself um, to your front end. So we kind of have everything we need. Um, we just need a final thing, which is essentially we want to provide dynamic stats to our users, right? So we want to show a chart that isn't fixed for this organization ID 12345. We want it to change depending on the organization that's looking at it. And post hog makes it pretty easy, right? Because we already have a filter. So all we need is we need to make sure we set that value dynamically. So I'll go here and search for one, two, three, four, five. Um, and here it is. So let's get rid of that. And let's instead substitute it for a dynamic value. I have a filter value constant here. Um, and essentially here I have this as a constant, but what you really want to do is you want to pull this from somewhere, right? You want this to be, you know, integrated with your logic somehow so that you have the organization idea of who's looking at this chart so that you do the request to post hog using the filter right there. Um, so you, you know, post hog is doing a lot of the stuff for you. It's filtering already. It's giving you the data in a nice format and you just have to kind of display it to your users. So now that we've finished up, you know, our little demo app here, let's take a look at what that looks like. So if I come back here and I go over here, let's refresh this. There we go. So now we have the same chart as what we were looking at before. Um, and this is how you would go about um, doing this. So essentially, you, you do need to kind of take some time and look at the data that you get back from the requests you make to post hog um, and parsing that appropriately to provide any graphs that you create um, however you like, you know, using whatever design style you want to use. Um, but you are able to do this relatively easy um, in, in an easy way. So I hope this was helpful and uh, maybe see you some other time.